Hello everyone! This is Sorry and Target welcoming you back to the next installment in our Carnivores Mod Showcase series, where today, in a shocking twist, we're not actually showcasing a mod! Surprise! I wonder how many people have clicked off already? Well, for those lucky and intelligent bunch of you who are still here, today I am instead bringing you guys the complete coverage of a patch for arguably the most well-known of the Carnivores classics that I think is extremely well put together and, for an OCD and detail-oriented person like myself, is so very satisfying and absolutely necessary. Carnivores 2+. So Carnivores 2 Plus, as you may have guessed based on the name, is very similar to the critically acclaimed Carnivores Plus, in that it revisits its namesake classic Carnivores game with updates, corrections, and improvements that action forms either forgot or left out due to budget cuts or time restraints. But where Carnivores Plus essentially manages to stand on its own as its own mod with its own story, content, and lore, kind of like a soft reboot of Carnivores, Carnivores 2 Plus is much more akin to a patch for Carnivores 2. It's more focused on fixing the technical issues and continuity errors of Carnivores 2 rather than adding to and expanding the Carnivores 2 lore. Although it does feature some additional content not present in the base game, and today we're covering it all as in-depth as possible, basically mod showcasing it. And if you do want to try out Carnivores 2 Plus, which if you're a fan of or want to play Carnivores 2, I would highly recommend, as always I've left a download link in the description below. Although it is a patch for Carnivores 2, you do not need the original game to play it. The base game comes included with the patch, so just download Carnivores 2 Plus and have fun! I know you guys love these mod showcases, they are far and away what most people request and most people watch here on the channel. In fact, I still get asked, Saurian, when will you showcase this mod? Or, why don't you do mod showcases anymore? I do. You loyal subscribers know that this YouTube gig isn't my job, and mod showcases take a long time to put together if you want them to be any good. So I'll make you guys a deal. If we can get 1000 likes on this video, I will get you guys another mod showcase done before the year 2019 is over, which means we will have had three full length mod showcases this year, which will be the best that I've done since like 2016. I've been working on this one in the background, but if you guys pull through, I'll prioritize it and get it done before 2020. I know it seems lame, but more likes makes YouTube's algorithm happy, which helps my channel out, which allows me to put more time into making mod showcases for you guys. So if you enjoy what you see here, leave a like. It's free, it's effortless, and it really does help me out. Anyway guys, without further ado, let's begin our showcase of Carnivores 2 Plus. So as mentioned, Carnivores 2 Plus is a revisiting of the classic Carnivores 2 put together by Raptorclaw, who many of you guys know from his excellent skin packs, like that one with the walking with dinosaurs Allosaurus that I'm never gonna get to. Uh, just kidding, just kidding. But, instead of being a full-blown, standalone mod with its own original lore and content and story like Carnivores Plus, Carnivores 2 Plus is basically a patch for its base game. Although, like I mentioned, there is some new content included in the patch to give Carnivores 2 some more meat on its bones. As you guys know, I love Carnivores 2. It's the first Carnivores game, and video game period, I ever got. But as a sequel to Carnivores, it honestly feels more like a very basic, rushed, and underwhelming DLC pack for the original, rather than a full-fledged sequel. More in-depth thoughts on that topic here. The technological improvements were great, but as far as adding any real, meaty, world-building content, Carnivores 2 is a bit of a disappointment compared to its predecessor. So Carnivores 2 Plus includes some new content to help it feel more like a complete game. Three new maps, a new weapon, and a new bonus dinosaur. But the real focus of Carnivores 2 Plus as a patch is correcting the technical issues and continuity errors that the community has been pointing out for years. 
anything. Now, because I've talked ad nauseum about Carnivores 2 here on the channel, be that through top 5 videos, discussion videos, or full-on reviews, I'm gonna skip over the unchanged content from the base Carnivores 2 game. What we are doing today is running through the change log to talk about the changes, how they impact the game, how they differ from the base game, and whether or not this version is worth having over the original Carnivores 2. Carnivores 2 Plus Change Log Fixes All dinosaurs have received size changes and or corrections to their menu text. All animals now include mortal zones. Brachiosaurus now has proper footsteps. Chasmosaurus has a brand new dying sound. Velociraptor is slightly faster and includes new sound effects for the dying animation. Velociraptor, Spinosaurus, and Ceratosaurus have all received necessary size changes and are no longer all the same size. And Spinosaurus and Ceratosaurus are slightly more aggressive. Odd dinosaur sizes have always been an issue in the Carnivore series. Not related to scientific accuracy in regard to any era's current understanding of the real Earth animals, however, as the designs and sizes of these alien dinosaurs seem to be a deliberate artistic choice. Instead, due to deadlines, budget, time, or other business factors, many animals in the Carnivores universe feel rushed in how their in-game sizes align with their menu descriptions, be it Stegosaurus supposedly maxing out at 7 tons despite reaching nearly double that weight in-game, Velociraptors allegedly weighing about as much as a freaking rhinoceros, or yetis being able to reach heights and weights that would tower them over nearly anything else on the entire planet. A lot of these continuity errors stem from what we assume to be rushed or lazy copy and paste edits to hurriedly meet deadlines, and add to the reasons why the Carnivore sequels really kind of fall short of true, full-fledged sequel status. But Raptor Claw has done an admirable and thorough job of not only making their lore sizes a bit more reasonable, but adjusting the actual in-game sizes to sync near perfectly with how large or small each animal is described. Raptor Claws even put together a detailed size chart on how each carnivore's animal stacks up to the others as a reference, and it's this level of consistent and thorough detail and dedication that I really admire. Raptor Claw knows a whole lot more about paleontology and biology and anatomy and all of the things that make up constructing an animal than I do, so I feel very confident that his new size standard for these beloved animals has done them justice. Do I even need to explain how bringing back Mortal Zones is a good thing? No, but I will. Mortal Zones were present in the original carnivores that rewarded experienced and skillful hunters by allowing them to target an animal's weak spots, like the eye, heart, or spine, for a clean, one-shot kill, allowing them to conserve ammunition, have longer, more rewarding hunts, and give the pinpoint accurate sniper rifle that true feeling of being a rewarding end-game weapon. For some reason, this wonderfully realistic mechanic was dropped right after the first game, now forcing hunters to just pump as many shots into the dinosaurs as it takes to bring them down, no matter where you placed your shot. Remember sniping Stegosaurus in the head for a clean, realistic, and rewarding one-shot kill? Well, not anymore. Now get back to pumping its tail full of lead, it'll have the same effect eventually. Thankfully, many of the Carnivore's mods since then have brought Mortal Zones back, and now Carnivore's 2 Plus has as well, bringing a level of skill and reward back to Carnivore's 2 that was missing from the base game. Remember how useless backup weapons like the shotgun or pistol were in Carnivore's 2 when a charging predator ambushed you and you hadn't already put in 4 of the 5 necessary shots required to kill it? Well, worry not, dinosaur hunters! Now, as long as you know where to aim, backup close combat weapons actually have a purpose. If you find yourself suddenly staring down the throat of a hungry Ceratosaurus. The fact that the Brachiosaurus didn't have any footstep sounds actually kinda surprised me, because I guess I just never noticed. For an in-game explanation, I suppose you could chalk it up to the impact being muffled by the mud and water and then drowned out by the sounds of the world. 
but even when it walks onto land, the Brachiosaurus just silently tiptoes around. Until now, that is. Here's a comparison in case you were like me and just completely overlooked the mysteriously quiet sauropod. As you can see, the Brachiosaurus now has some powerful footsteps to magnify its strength and majesty, and I think it's an excellent fix that helps further bring this animal to life. To say that the Chasmosaurus borrowed a lot from the Triceratops would be an understatement. Same rig, same animations, same idle sounds, same sizes and statistics, the thing even looks like a more anatomically correct Triceratops. The only real, original element to the Chasmosaurus is its calls, which admittedly are some of the best in the game, but not enough to excuse the fact that it felt like Action Forms just wanted to do Triceratops again without being so lazy ass to just copy and paste their actual Triceratops model back in, even though they pretty much did everything but that. While I always would have preferred Ankylosaurus be introduced in this dangerous, intermediate herbivore slot instead of a reheated trike, or at the very least have Chasmosaurus actually look like Burian's painting, since Carnivores 2 Plus aims to primarily remedy continuity issues, it has given the Chasmosaurus a brand new death sound, since of the sounds it borrowed from Triceratops, that's the one that really sticks out the most as copied. Here's a comparison so you can see how the sound has changed. This new death sound is much more Chasmosaurus appropriate, evoking the dinosaur's uniquely harsh and abrasive calls, and I think it's great. Of all the dinosaurs to receive new fixes and updates in this patch, I believe the Velociraptor has received the most. In addition to some upcoming group changes that we'll talk about in a minute, on its own, the Velociraptor has not only been sped up, but received some edits to its death sound. After testing the new speed for a bit, it is noticeable, but only if you're really looking for it. The smaller carnivores like Allosaurus and Velociraptor are both pretty easy to outmaneuver. The higher up you go in the food chain, the more difficult the outmaneuvering gets. And admittedly, the Velociraptor is still fairly easy to outmaneuver, even with the speed boost. But it does cover ground much quicker than it used to. In fact, longtime hunters may actually be able to notice the increase in speed without being informed. Even if slight, it's a fitting update for the dinosaur once worshipped for its speed, and just gives the Velociraptor that little individualized edge over the similarly built Allosaurus. The Velociraptor also received a slight tweak to its death sound. The screech remains the same, but new sound effects have been added to indicate the body hitting the ground, which were surprisingly absent in the original sound effect. Let's listen to a comparison so you can hear for yourself. <laughs> A couple of very simple fixes that a lot of people might not have even noticed, but just go to show how thorough and dedicated the Carnivores community is on preserving the quality and legacy of these games. Perhaps most infamously of the rushed copy and paste jobs Carnivores 2 received before its release was that of the Spinosaurus and Ceratosaurus both using the Velociraptor's exact in-game size statistics, despite being listed as significantly larger on the menus. As I mentioned earlier, thanks to Raptor Claw's incredibly detailed and thorough reconfiguration, all of the Carnivores 2 dinosaurs have been adjusted to a more reasonable size standard. And perhaps the two greatest examples of this new size chart are the Spinosaurus and Ceratosaurus. 
Even discounting their description sizes, their in-game models were both significantly larger than that of the Velociraptor. Yet because they shared the exact same statistics, they were always given the exact same size, maxing out at about 16 feet long and weighing roughly half a ton. Now, however, they have all received some adjustments, with Velociraptor maxing out at about 1,500 pounds instead of being listed at two freaking tons, the Spinosaurus maxing out at about two to two and a half tons, and the Ceratosaurus maxing out at about five to six tons, much more in line with their hunt menu sizes and in-game models, along with their lengths adjusted if necessary to match their descriptions. Tatum actually tried correcting this issue years ago with the mobile port versions of the dinosaurs, but even today, their size corrections are still very inconsistent. Even after its infamous scale down, hooray for us the community, <laughs> the mobile Spinosaurus is still about as heavy as a wall of lead, and the mobile Ceratosaurus still maxes out either just as long or even slightly shorter than the Velociraptor. Again, this just goes to show how much more detailed and thorough and passionate this community has proven itself over those who are actually profiting from the game's success. And it makes me proud to see the fans putting forth such excellent and quality updates that even the suits can't be bothered with. The Spinosaurus and Ceratosaurus are also slightly more aggressive in Carnivores 2 Plus, although admittedly, this one was a bit difficult for me to playtest. Both Predators actually have a pretty decent fleet of fight range in the base game, somewhere around 260 meters for the Spinosaurus and around 280 meters for the Ceratosaurus. Really, the only time they do flee, aside from smelling the Hunter outside the target range indicator circle, is right at the edge of the Hunter's vision. But every time I encountered one of these carnivores in Carnivores 2 Plus, it came after me with everything it had, which I'm sure most players prefer over chasing down extremely fast dinosaurs all the way across the map. Ultimately, I'm pretty indifferent to this change myself. It's not quite impactful enough to make a difference in my own experiences, and I always did kind of like the fact that these effective and dangerous hunters would occasionally flee, making them feel more like real animals. But I know most players would rather the carnivores fight than flee, and that's part of what makes this game fun and exciting. So I'm glad the update is here for their enjoyment. So those were just the technical changes to the content that was already in the game. What we're going to cover next are the brand new content additions that were not present in the original Carnivores 2 that kind of help flesh it out and make it feel more complete. Carnivores 2 Plus Changelog Additions Three new maps, Ancient Coast, Object 12, and Mount Kirk. One new bonus dinosaur, Amargosaurus, and one new weapon, the Revolver. Three new maps bumps up Carnivores 2's map roster from five maps to eight maps. While the sequel's maps were certainly larger than those of its predecessor, being roughly four times as large, I personally always felt that came at the expense of the quality of the map design. Carnivores 2 maps, while functional, natural looking, and generally well made, just don't have that mysticism or engaging world building that made the maps of Carnivores 1 so alluring and charming. Not to mention Carnivores 2 actually has fewer maps than the first game, only featuring 5 compared to the first Carnivores 6 map roster. However, Carnivores 2 Plus's additional 3 maps gives it a more sizable map roster fitting of a sequel, and for the most part, these new maps are solid additions, more so in the way of mystery and world building than the default Carnivores 2 maps were anyway. In a refreshing twist, Ancient Coast is actually the first map you unlock in Carnivores 2 Plus, taking the 20 point cost of Delphius Hills, which itself has been bumped up to 50 points. This starter hunting zone is actually comprised of two small islands clumped together, the larger island to the northwest and the smaller island to the southeast, and is estimated to be in close proximity to the planet's equator, specifically in the central sector. 
As a beginner map, Ancient Coast does not feature much in the way of challenging terrain, with each island comprised mostly of sand dunes covered in scrubland vegetation. Although of the two, the larger northwestern island is more varied in terms of dune size and vegetation density, and also features a small mountain range lining the northern coast. This hunting zone was discovered by Dino Hunt Corp soon after their discovery of the planet, even before the C1 tour opened. However, the island was initially restricted from hunters and established as a protected nature reserve. The reason for this lies in the ancient coast's unique, life-sustaining feature, freshwater pools. Tucked away inside its clear pools live two endemic species of invertebrates, a freshwater species of trilobite and a small green species of dragonfly. Both of these animals are critically endangered on the dinosaur planet, initially found only in the southeastern island's freshwater pool. But now that their populations are more stable, the entire area has been opened for hunting. Before this change, however, Dinohunt Corp actually constructed a small water pumping facility on the same pond that housed the endangered species. Because of its currently dilapidated state, the facility's purpose remains unclear, as any information it may hide inside remains locked behind a steel door. The most common story tossed around is that it was actually used to purify the water the animals depend on for life. The trilobite logo plastered on the facility, as well as the decaying sign that reads Prehistoric Mineral Water, property of Dynamite Corp, perhaps indicated a conscious effort on the part of the company to study these animals and provide for their needs. Or perhaps was a ploy to siphon the specialized minerals on which these animals depend for commercial or personal use. Whatever the reason, the facility remains rusting and abandoned, a solemn reminder of the company's often crass interaction with the planet's native, fragile wildlife. After unlocking Delphius Hills at 50 points and Fort Siskin at 100 points, hunters gain access to the next new map on the tour, Object 12 at 150 points. Unlike the sparse, coastal scrublands of Ancient Coast, Object 12 is much more of a tropical jungle, complete with ferns, cycads, and a plethora of prehistoric trees. The landscape is much more rugged and mountainous, with massive hills cutting through the jungles, almost dividing them up into sections, all while creating vantage points for human hunters, ambush cover for saurian hunters, and inescapable funnel pockets for prey animals. On the southeastern coast, the landscape flattens into a peaceful beach, complete with a sizable freshwater pond the local animals use to drink. One of the most imposing and mysterious aspects of Object 12 is the massive, barren patch in the center of the island. An immense stretch of desolation that forms a near-perfect circle when viewed from above, this area is believed to have been created by the Ancients, as it was already in place when Dino Hunt Corp first arrived on the island's shores. All of the vegetation within the circle's perfectly contained border is withered and dying, a phenomenon that baffles even Dino Hunt Corp's top scientists. Because of this eerie, supernatural occurrence, many publications question the ethical implications of opening this area for public access, a criticism usually protested about other supernaturally charged hunting zones on the planet, like the ancient temple in the C1 sector and Dory Oasis in the Triassic sector. However, this enormous ring of death is only part of why this island's public status is so heavily protested. The other is linked to how the island received its mysterious name, and that terrifying reason is none other than the Bunker. Tucked away in a remote corner of the northwestern mountains lies the long-abandoned Bunker. Although the company denies any involvement with the facility, it is believed to have served as a Dino Hunt secret laboratory, as evidenced by the lab equipment and technology that now lies rusting and entangled in nature's vengeful snare. 
However, the bunker lacks the company's distinctive logo they so brazenly plaster on their property. But as several publications have pointed out, said logos could have easily been removed to avoid negativity in the aftermath of the bunker's abandonment. Regardless of Dino Hunt Corp's specific involvement, the fact that the laboratory was built by humans is undeniable. During scouting and research expeditions, Dino Hunt Corp claims to have recovered only one thing from the bunker, a large external hard drive. On this hard drive, only one file was found, an empty folder titled Object 12. What exactly took place in this bunker is unknown, and the only evidences of any activity lie deep within the creaking walls. Contained within two life support cylinders are a pair of Velociraptor, still astonishingly clinging to life on the dwindling remnants of their life support solution. With no data retrieved from the bunker, Dinohunt Corp has no indication of the dinosaur's vitals, lifespan, health, or purpose in regard to this experiment, and have opted to leave the animals be until their life support supplement depletes. Next to the Velociraptors are two large alien eggs, each labeled as hazardous. One still sealed, the other hatched. What may have been gestating inside the egg, or been inside the third life support cylinder, remains unknown although it is assumed to have caused the downfall of the bunker. Despite being long deserted, many sounds can still be heard deep inside the bunker. This has given the bunker an infamous reputation as the only man-made structure on the dinosaur planet regularly considered haunted. This unsettlingly eerie disaster site, coupled with the otherworldly wasteland just a few hundred meters to the south, continued to establish Object 12 as a controversial yet popular destination for thrill-seeking Dino Hunt clientele. Mount Kirk is the final map available to unlock in Carnivores 2 Plus at 700 points. A vast, desolate hunting zone, known for its respectable volcanic activity, prominent Tyrannosaurus population, and rather unfortunate missing persons incident. This hunting zone was a favorite of a famed Earthborn hunter and member of a prominent hunting guild. During one of his hunts, the man went missing during a snowstorm in the northeastern mountains and was never seen or heard from again. The man's name was Kirk, and through substantial fees made by his old, now disbanded hunting guild, the area was renamed in his honor. In fact, his old hunting cabin still remains standing in the southern forests, his possessions still as they were on the day he left. When not constrained by the eponymous mountain range, Mount Kirk is bordered by massive dinosaur walls, implying that Dino Hunt Corp has placed more focus in controlling travel through this area than nearly any other public hunting zone. The southern part of the hunting zone is comprised primarily of dense scrubland, with the hardy yet thick vegetation providing ample cover for predators and prey alike. A series of dwindling pathways cut through the shrubbery, creating clear travel routes for human hunters, but also giving Saurian hunters a clear line of sight. The harsh nature of the flora here hints towards a destructive force that wrecked havoc on the area, with these scrublands being the farthest away from Ground Zero, but still bearing the scars of the event's devastating power. The center sections of the hunting zone also provide evidence of a destructive force, although in sharp contrast to one another. Bleached shorelines cut by recovering rivers bear dead tree scars as a result, but some lush areas still remain. Tucked away in a pocket corner of a mountain wall lies a fertile floodplain, complete with grazing pastures, fresh drinking water, and a host of endemic life, 
a fragile picture into the area's past before devastation struck. Despite the carnage, many fish species have begun to repopulate the bleak rivers, returning life to the now scarred hunting zone. To the north lies a vast wasteland, which, in similar fashion to the Great Lake, seems to have been ravaged by natural disasters, although instead of meteor showers, by the area's trademark volcanic activity. The land is burnt and barren, with the few creatures that still venture out here scraping for what little food they can find. The evidence of this destructive earthen assault seems to ring throughout the hunting zone, obliterating these northern plains, scarring the mid-range forests, and only singeing the scrublands to the south, while missing the secret Edens tucked away in the safety of the mountains. To the northwest lies a vast snow plain that leads to the most challenging part of the mountain range. Despite the hostility of the environment, the roars of a strange creature can be heard ringing over the howling wind, and few hunters ever willingly venture into these snowdrifts, especially after the disappearance of Kirk. Ultimately, I think these new maps are a more than welcome addition to Carnivores 2, even if some of them don't quite fit the overall theme of Carnivores 2's original map design. Now, as far as meta history goes, Ancient Coast and Object 12 are some of the earliest custom maps ever made for Carnivores, both created by the legend himself, Gendos, the same person responsible for Carnivore's first ever custom dinosaur models, Iguanodon, Carnotaurus, and Dilophosaurus. Because custom quality map making was, and to an extent still is, so rare, these maps were huge when they first came out in 2012, and you bet your bottom dollar I played the heck out of them when they became available. I adored these maps, I still do. They're still some of the most professionally crafted fan maps out there. I actually gave Object 12 a bit of an unofficial showcase in my Dinosaur Island showcase, covering, coincidentally, one of Raptor Claw's many skin packs. But beyond that, these maps have sadly faded into irrelevance over time. The primary reason for that, I believe, is because quality map making is so difficult, especially in the early days when it wasn't that common to see custom maps outside of Carnivore's Triassic. These pre-made, ready-to-go custom maps that weren't tied to any specific mod or story got thrown all over the place in alpha builds of tons of mods, kind of desensitizing us to their uniqueness and legacy. Regardless, I am beyond thrilled that they finally have a kind of official home here in Carnivores 2 Plus. Even though only Ancient Coast really fits the Carnivores 2 theme, Object 12 very much feels like the more tropical, jungle-themed maps of Carnivores 1. And Mount Kirk feels kind of like a hybrid of the two, mostly keeping with Carnivores 2's predominantly temperate or coastal forest feel. But Ancient Coast really hits the nail on the head, and I personally think it fits the Carnivores 2 theme the best. However, each of these maps add a level of mystery and intrigue that Carnivores 2 was sorely lacking, especially in its final few maps. And I think that more than makes up for these maps' tonal inconsistencies. Mount Kirk does feel like a bit of an oddball here, as it does feel the most fan-made of the three new maps. In fact, it's the most recent map in the patch's lineup, having been created just a couple of years ago by the ever-talented animator StarCrafty. And like the fan-favorite map Morrison's Maze, Mount Kirk doubles as a nice homage to the Walking with Dinosaurs episode, Death of a Dynasty, even featuring the iconic charred riverbank where the main Tyrannosaurus hunted down in Anatta Titan after hatching her eggs. These three maps by themselves expand upon the mythology of the Western Central Sector more than the entirety of Carnivores 2, and are welcome additions that honor the community's more lore-heavy modding origins and future. Carnivores 2 Plus features one new bonus dinosaur, unlocked after the Tyrannosaurus at a whopping 1,000 points, Amargosaurus.
the rare sauropod that Dino Hunt Corp features on its hunting tours, Amargosaurus is available for clients to pursue only for a limited time. As evidenced by their absence during earlier seasons of the C2 tour, these awe-inspiring herbivores are migratory, traveling great distances to find food and shelter to suit their needs. Occasionally, their migration path takes them through many classic Dino Hunt safari areas, and it is this remarkable natural event that actually sets the stage and context for Carnivores 2 Plus's story and deviations from the base game. This patch takes place specifically during the Amargosaurus migration event, a special seasonal reopening of the Western Central Sector tour, hence the new locations, new weapon, and new Saurian quarry. Now, let's break down Carnivore's newest and bluest long-necked dinosaur. Personally, I adore this Amargosaurus, and I think it is easily one of the best sauropods the Carnivore series has ever seen, if not the best. Although it may seem cliche at this point, I actually appreciate how the Amargosaurus continues the Carnivore's tradition of featuring a sauropod as a bonus animal, because I think Carnivore's 2 Plus finally pulls off that stereotype extremely well. Ever since the legendary Seismosaurus was rumored to be a hidden, unlockable bonus animal way back in the days of the original Carnivores games, many mods have honored that meta mythos by including a sauropod as the final animal in their rosters, something we never had from the official games. Although it's often been done with poor to mixed results, usually because of the animal's awkwardly gigantic sizes, rough animations, and low quality designs. However, Amargosaurus hits that sweet spot of being just large enough to be an impressive sauropod while not overshadowing everything else in the world. It moves and feels real and organic, and that naturality is key to making these larger animals work in-game, and is something the Amargosaurus pulls off exceptionally well. The Amargosaurus's overall design is absolutely gorgeous. It instantly looks like a carnivore's appropriate dinosaur. Everything from the tail length to the head shape to the sail-connected neural spines is wonderfully canon-styled, all layered with a fantastic Burian texture. The soft blue and gold colorations complement the bright silver spines and osteoderms, as well as the dark limbs and stripes. All such rare colors in the Carnivore's universe that give Amargosaurus that much more character and uniqueness. The animations are also stellar, professionally slick and fluid, in sharp contrast to the stiff, awkward plodding of most Carnivore sauropod animations. This thing boasts such swagger, and all of the little details like it splaying its front legs to bend over and eat make it feel that much more alive, in addition to some powerful yet majestic calls. Amargosaurus embodies everything that makes sauropods so magnificent at a much more reasonable size for organically meshing with the gameplay of carnivores. Its design, calls, and animations are flawless. This is one of the best and most professionally crafted Carnivore's creatures ever. Truly, by itself, worthy of justifying this patch's existence on its own. But of all the things it has going for it, one of my personal favorite aspects about the Amargosaurus is that it doesn't feel like it's trying to one-up the Gojirasaurus. In the wake of Carnivore's Triassic story finale, it feels like, to me anyway, every new bonus animal nowadays has to be a bigger, nastier, more sinister Dino Hunt Court monstrosity that can take down the Gojirasaurus. I don't know, I've been out of the conversation for a while, maybe this isn't actually the case, but it seems like Gojirasaurus skeletons are everywhere in mods nowadays. And every new concept of a bonus animal I hear about in whispers and secrecy sounds more like it belongs in the monsterverse than in carnivores. Whether or not that's actually the case, it's just nice to finally see a bonus animal that feels like an animal. A graceful yet peaceful herbivore. A rare, top-tier, almost mythic creature that's not trying to outdo anything or be the next big bad. That's quite refreshing to me personally, and it makes this Amargosaurus feel that much more special. 
Carnivores 2 Plus features one new weapon on the firearm lineup, available at 50 points. The Revolver. A more heavy duty variant than previous revolver builds, this firearm was introduced specifically for more effectively dealing with the large, bulky predators of the C2 sector, as well as the rare Amargosaurus herds that migrate through. As you might expect, this new revolver works extremely well as a close combat self-defense weapon, especially now that mortal zones are back. With a good fire rate and decent damage, but it's not packing the firepower necessary to drop a Tyrannosaurus in its tracks without some skill behind the trigger. And despite the fact that it's a weapon that feels done to death at this point, this version of the revolver actually manages to feel pretty fresh. You guys probably know by now that as much as I do love it, I'm a bit jaded to Rex Hunter's old revolver model the community has been using for years. I respect it as one of the first fan-made models ever created for the series, but kind of like Ancient Coast and Object 12, because it was the only good new weapon model we had for a long time, it kind of got dumped into every new mod as the token new weapon to the point of overuse. It's almost an obligation to feature this revolver model in any new Carnivores mod nowadays. So when I heard that the new weapon in Carnivores 2 Plus would be a revolver, Admittedly, I rolled my eyes a bit, but this new revolver model, created by Cactus, the project leader for the upcoming Carnivores 2 mod, Carnivores Grazing Lands, is actually different and unique, based on the Carnivores HD revolver, which I found to be one of the few positive elements of the lackluster reboots, and is an excellent inclusion for this mod. The model is incredibly faithful to the HD version, and the animations are pretty good. That rotating chamber both in the firing and reload animations I quite enjoy, although Cactus herself has improved in her revolving skills since this particular model debuted, so the Carnivores 2 Plus variant already feels pretty dated, but for its role in the patch it works well, and feels like a nice, logical, and fun inclusion that could and arguably should have been in Carnivores 2 from the start. Now as much as I do love and appreciate all that Carnivores 2 Plus is and does as a patch, it's still missing a few elements that, in my opinion, keep it from being the perfect iteration of Carnivores 2. Firstly, and probably most egregiously, Fort Siskin is still listed in the wrong place in the area description. For a patch that aims to fix the technical errors and continuity issues with the base game, Carnivores 2 Plus really struck out on a softball with this one. This information has been pointed out for years, and even the mobile ports got around to fixing this error, thanks to uh, yours truly. So there's really no excuse for not listing the correct location of the fort in this patch. While I appreciate that the maps are all in the correct pricing order, the weapons are still all over the place, jumping from 20 points to 100 points and back down to 50 points, then up to 150 points and back down to 50 points. Like, weapons can be rearranged in literally any order in the RAS file. It just makes more sense and looks more visually pleasing to list them in ascending price order. Granted, this one's more of a personal nitpick, but... Hey, it's me. There's also little to no consistency with the map rankings, even with the brand new ones specific to this patch. I think at this point, Mild as a rank has been discontinued within the community, and even the final map to unlock, Mount Kirk, is bizarrely an intermediate rank map. Shouldn't the final hunting zone, the supposed ultimate challenge, be, well, challenging? At least advanced rank? so the roster can close with an appropriately fitting grand finale map. It just seems like such an odd choice to end on a middle of the road ranking map. I feel Ancient Coast should be novice rank, Object 12 intermediate if not advanced, and Mount Kirk advanced for sure. Unlike Carnivores Plus, which lists each dinosaur's mortal zone along with their hunting information on the hunt menu, 
Carnivores 2 Plus leaves hunters to guess where each dinosaur's weak spot might be, an exclusion I'm personally not a fan of. I understand leaving the bonus animal's weak spot a mystery for players to figure out, and sure, some of them like Parasaurolophus or Allosaurus are easy to figure out since they're the same as in Carnivores Plus, but trying to figure out where to hit an Ankylosaurus or Spinosaurus while you're trying to earn points can be more tricky and discouraging than fun and challenging. Okay, now this one's a nitpick and a half for sure, but I'm personally not a big fan of the Amargosaurus' menu picture. For some reason, to me anyway, it just feels very disproportionate and dull compared to the other dinosaur menu pictures. And I personally don't like it when dinosaurs double back on themselves in the menu images. Like, I get that it's a sauropod, so it's difficult to fit everything in the frame effectively. But Carnivores Plus, which I might add features some of the brightest, sharpest, and cleanest menu pictures of any Carnivores mod, managed to fit Seismosaurus in its entirety without doubling back on itself. I don't know, I, I know it's nitpicky, but I feel the majesty and power the actual animal conveys in-game is non-existent in this admittedly rather awkward first impression. There's also no new customizations to the trophy room or trophy ship. Even if subtle, altering the trophy rooms and ships have been a staple of individualizing modern Carnivores mods to their themes. And while I understand that Carnivores 2 didn't change much, if anything, from these elements in the first place, so the argument could be made that a technical patch shouldn't have to either, I personally feel that the base game should have made those changes in the first place, and this patch would have been a great way to update those elements neglected in 1999. I mean, Poerex designed a brilliant custom trophy room for Carnivores 2 specifically, just begging to be used in this patch. And even just bumping up the trophy ship to the new Heavy Duty class model would have been a welcome upgrade without going overboard. And I know this one isn't a fault of the patch because of timing, but I really think an update aiming to improve on what Carnivores 2 should have been needs to include the new pack hunting and additional AI slots we recently unlocked. Now I know we unlocked the new AI way after this patch was released, but it just seems like the next logical step Carnivores 2 would and should have taken. And now that these new gameplay options are, in fact, real, tangible options for the community to take a hold of, it just makes this patch already feel even more dated by comparison. Regardless guys, Carnivores 2 Plus is a great update for the rather lackluster Carnivores 2 base game. And if you're on the fence about which one you should download, I personally see no reason to not download Carnivores 2 Plus over the base game. You get more content, technical improvements, and more cohesion and consistency than Action Forms bothered with 20 years ago. Sure, it's still lacking a few key elements that would truly make it a 100% upgrade to the base game, but for a simple patch aiming to do a simple job, I'd say it succeeds, and the additional content gives players even more opportunities to relive the memories of the earliest days of the modding community. However, just like Carnivores Plus improved on its base game with new maps, stories, and characters, and like Far North and the upcoming Ice Age Redux are improving and expanding upon the concepts and ideas introduced in Carnivores Ice Age, Carnivores 2 is also getting the soft reboot treatment in the form of the Carnivores 2 Redux, once again led by Raptor Claw, that aims to provide more lore, creatures, and general enhancements to the base Carnivores 2 game, to turn it into a proper, full-fledged sequel. This Redux mod will explore Dino Hunt Corp's failed colonization efforts in greater detail. We'll feature regional variants and sexual dimorphism of classic Carnivores 2 creatures on different AI slots, and we'll finally give proper homes to new creatures like the sauropod hunting Analio Tyrannus and the beautiful blue Amargosaurus we just showcased in this video. This Redux will, in essence, absorb and replace the Carnivores 2 patch and Carnivores Equinox. And if you're unfamiliar with Equinox, since we didn't talk about it too much here on the channel, it was intended to be a half Carnivores 2 reboot, half self-contained mod that focused on seasonal variants of the Carnivores 2 dinosaurs and maps. 
but now the best ideas of that mod and the Carnivores 2 Plus patch are being repurposed into the Carnivores 2 Redux, which is shaping up to be the ultimate one-stop shop Carnivores 2 experience. This Redux is going to take a backseat to the Ice Age Redux for now, but when it's ready, we are going to cover the heck out of it, and I can't wait to show it off to you guys. Alright, so there you go guys, we have covered the update patch for Carnivores 2 as thoroughly as we can. And just to clear up any confusion, you do not need the original Carnivores 2 game to download this patch. It comes with Carnivores 2 already. So if you'd like, just download Carnivores 2 Plus from the link in the description, and you'll be well on your way to playing a much more refined version of the Dinosaur Hunting Classic. But now I want to hear from you guys, whether you've played Carnivores 2 Plus or just from watching this video, what's your favorite part of the patch? The new maps, the Amargosaurus, the revolver, or the quality of life fixes like the new sound effects or sized adjustments? Be sure to let me know down in the comment section below. And thanks as always for watching guys, I really appreciate all the patience and support you guys show these videos. It is because of you that I make this content. I'm so glad you guys enjoy it, and as long as you guys keep watching this content, unless Coppa decides that these extremely long analysis videos about murdering animals or getting your guts ripped out by them is actually for kids because it's a fun video game with bright colors and shuts me down in a month or so, I will for sure keep making it. Thanks again guys, you are all truly the best, and I will see you guys next time. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching, I genuinely appreciate it and I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you do enjoy the Carnivores games and Carnivores content on YouTube, and want to help support this channel, you can do so at patreon.com slash sorryandtarget, there's a link down below in the description of this video. As many of you guys know, this YouTube channel is not my job and it takes a lot of my time to work on videos. But I love doing it for you guys, and every little bit donated helps me dedicate more time to making you guys the best Carnivores content on YouTube. Thank you all for everything you do. I love you all, you are all the best. And I will see you guys next time.